When you plan to move abroad, one of the things you will quickly realize is how much stuff that you own. And then it will be up to you to figure out what exactly you want to bring with you to your new country. And this can be quite a challenge. So today we'll be talking about how to decide what to bring with you when you move abroad. Welcome back or welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Julia. I am an American and I've been living in Portugal since 2019. So I definitely know how difficult it can be to decide what to bring with you when moving to a new country. Today we'll be talking about the pros and cons of bringing more or less stuff and stick around till the end. I'll give you some pointers on how you can decide for yourself what you personally want to bring to your new home. So I've definitely seen and heard about people bringing literally everything that they own to a new country. While I think this is a great idea, idea in terms of having all the comforts that you're used to because moving to a new country can be very challenging and adapting to new stuff all at once can be very difficult. So bringing all of the things that you're used to can be helpful. However, this is very expensive. It can cost upwards of thousands of dollars and you may not even use some or most of the things that you bring. So seeing this, I did basically the exact opposite and I took as little as I could. I sold or donated all of my furniture. I donated some of my clothing. I sold or donated all of my appliances for the kitchen and any kind of decor that I had. Um, I scanned as many documents as I could so that I had an electronic file and I could bring it on my computer so that I wouldn't have to bring physical papers with me. So what did I bring? I brought the clothes I decided to keep. I brought my personal electronics, so my laptop, my iPhone, and my iPad. And then I brought photos, of course, because I wanted something from home. And then I brought a few books. I brought a few personal items like hair products and makeup products to get me started because I wasn't familiar with all the new brands in the new country and I just wanted to have my daily use items already with me until I could figure out what I would replenish it with, the, new, the local brands, because not all brands that exist in the United States existed in Portugal. So I wanted to make sure I had some things to start out with. Now, my case might be different than yours. I was moving into an apartment that was already furnished and so I obviously didn't have space to bring my own furniture, but that wasn't the main reason that I got rid of so much stuff. I thought it would be much less expensive and much less like taxing to move everything in terms of like the stress of making sure that everything got to Portugal. And there is some paperwork involved in documenting what things you're going to bring. And I wanted to avoid that whole process. So I brought things that I would have basically brought on any trip just like obviously more clothes so that I didn't have to go through the whole hassle of dealing with shipping in my items and having to deal with potential issues with duties or taxes. So what happened when I arrived after I made this decision? So it's been almost two years since I arrived and I will tell you the first year was a little bit challenging not having all of my stuff or more of my stuff. I realized a couple months in that maybe it had been a mistake to bring so little because basically every time I did something, I had to adapt to the new thing. There are some items you won't want to bring and we'll talk about that. So there's just no way around that. But it was like, there were, there were small little things that I missed, like some decor that I really liked in my old home that I could have pretty much easily brought. And it would have made me feel a little bit more at home seeing as everything was so new and different. And so that's some things that I wish that I would have brought. And other things like really simple things that may not make sense to everyone. But for example, when I would make a tea, I really missed some of my mugs that I was used to having tea with. And it would have been nice to have just had some things that were familiar instead of of adapting everything new and another thing that I really wish I would have brought was my measuring cups for baking because I love to bake and to cook and as you may know the United States uses a different measuring system than most of the world so when I went to start baking and cooking in my kitchen in Portugal it was so tough because I had to convert all of my measurements and I was not used to that at all so I actually avoided baking a lot when I first moved to Portugal because I didn't have the tools that I was used to and it was stressful to try to figure it all out like even once you measure all the ingredients you're already gonna have to put it in an oven that works off of Celsius and you might think it's just a few conversions but when you convert 
like 12 different things at one time, you're just like multiplying the chances that you're gonna have a mishap. And I can definitely, <laughs> I wish I had pictures. I definitely screwed up a pie and some other things like burnt cookies. And it just takes a lot to adapt. So anything that you can bring to help make your transition a little bit smoother would definitely be good. However, I don't think that most people will wanna bring everything that they own. So you're going to need to spend a lot of time and thought into carefully choosing what you bring with you. So that being said, there are some things you might wanna consider and some things you will definitely have to consider. So the first thing you have to consider is what does the new country you're moving to actually allow you to bring? That's right, you can't just bring everything that you want to. I'll use Portugal as an example because that's where I moved to. Fortunately, Portugal is very nice about letting you bring the stuff that you already own, but there are a few stipulations. So you do have to have owned that item for at least six months before you move, you have to fill out a document listing all of the items that you want to bring and the estimated price for those items. And this paperwork is called a baggage certificate or there may be called something else in the language, in the local language, if your country has such a thing. And so you'll have to fill this out and get it approved by the embassy. And then once it's approved, then you will have that documentation so that when you ship your items and they pass the border, you don't have to pay duties on those items. And these items also have to arrive within six months of you landing in Portugal. So there are some requirements that you'll have to meet if you want to bring some items. You're going to need to check with the embassy or immigration office of the country you're moving to to see if there are any items that you absolutely cannot bring because not all countries allow you to have the same items. Okay, so the next thing that you're gonna have to consider is how much space you have. So I'm assuming that if you're moving to a new country that you have an idea of where you might be living. So you have to consider what would actually fit in that space. So from, from my example, I was moving into a furnished apartment. So there definitely wasn't space to bring my couch, even though I really loved my couch, I couldn't bring it because there was just simply no space for it. The next thing you need to consider is your budget. Obviously, if you don't have thousands of dollars to spend, you're not going to be able to probably bring everything that you own, which is totally fine. You're probably gonna wanna buy some new stuff anyways. You're just gonna have to be more strict about what you wanna bring, but I actually think that's a really good thing because it can be such a hassle to bring too much stuff and then figure out what you're gonna do with the stuff you don't want there with you anymore. If you actually have small enough items that you can bring them with you in suitcases, you're gonna have to consider the price of of bringing extra luggage on the airplane with you if you go by airplane, which is probably the case for most people. It can cost hundreds of dollars just to add extra pieces of luggage. For me, I bought a more expensive plane ticket that allowed me to bring up to four bags and that was enough for me and even that was a couple hundred dollars more. But it was definitely cheaper than shipping the items from Texas, where I came from, all the way to Portugal. So you're gonna have to compare a few different prices and look things up and decide what works best for your budget. The next thing to me is one of the most important things. You need to really look at your items and decide which ones for you have sentimental value. Now, some people aren't that sentimental and they can give away their things more easily. And some people are more sentimental and they feel like everything has a personal attachment. So to the best of your ability, you just need to look at your items and say like, if I got rid of this thing, could I, you know, would I miss it terribly or would, it, would I be fine? And then bring those sentimental items with you. You're going to want to have have some items that are familiar or I'm guessing you would just based on my experience because you're gonna have so many things that are new and sometimes that can be overwhelming and just kind of relaxing and the stuff that you're used to will be such a release of stress. So let's say you decide that you want to go ahead and ship your stuff to the new country you're moving to, then you are going to need to pick a moving company. Now, like I said, I didn't use one, but I know a lot of people who have used UPAC We Ship, and I'll include the link for that below. You can check it out, and that's just a starting point for you to figure out 
what these companies typically offer and you compare that with other companies. I just wanna give you some kind of place to start even though I can't recommend specifically or describe how the services were, but I have seen people have good experiences with that company. So these are things that you can look at and you can consider, but I wanna address a few things that I think are pretty universal in what you should and should not bring. So I would recommend not bringing large items such as rugs or couches unless they have extreme sentimental value to you or your budget is through the roof and you know you just like those items because those are large and expensive to ship and they can easily be replaced in a new country in most cases. So for example, when I moved to Portugal, we already have a new couch and I love this couch and it's, it was easy to replace and I think it was less expensive to actually buy the new couch than having shipped my old couch. It also matches more the local style and it's helped me figure out what my style in Portugal looks like. So it can be a fun experience and these are items that are such a nuisance to move so you might as well just start over with them. Another thing in this category is dishes and plates. Again, if they're super sentimental for you or you have a, a really big budget and you don't think you would want to replace them then by all means bring it but in most cases I would say don't bring dishes they're very fragile and you can find dishes basically everywhere you would move and you may even find it more fun to have new items like this so these are things that are difficult to ship and easy to replace in a new country the next thing you might want to avoid bringing is electrical appliances so hair dryers or even blenders things like this especially when the country that you're moving to has a different outlet or a different voltage in their outlet. For me, I was moving from the United States to Portugal, so obviously there's a different outlet and I would need a converter to use all these things and they're not that expensive to replace. So it made more sense to just leave those things at home, sell them, donate them, store them if you have that option, and then just buy a new one when you get to your new country. So the one exception to bringing things that can be plugged in is your laptop, iPad, or phone. These have a universally compatible voltage when you plug them in. So the only thing you need to do when you get to a new country is you can buy actually the charger that fits your phone or laptop, but has the right kind of plug to fit into the wall and you'll be good to go. And those aren't terribly expensive but obviously replacing a laptop can be very expensive. So definitely bring your electronics. Another thing is DVDs. So I did not know this before moving. DVDs have regions. So for example, DVDs made in the United States are region one and DVDs made in Europe are a totally different region. So if you take a DVD from the United States, that's a region one DVD, and you try to play it in a DVD player in Portugal, it will not be able to read it. That being said, video games are also universally compatible. So so definitely feel free to bring your video games if you can't live without them, but again, you can also rebuy some video games and I know that gaming systems are changing all the time. So if you, for example, loved your PS4 games, you may not wanna bring those necessarily if you're already buying a PS5. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon for notifications so that you can get notified when I have new videos available. If you have any questions about items where you're not really sure if you should bring them or not, go ahead and leave that in the comments below and I'll do my best to try to help you figure that one out. Thanks for watching and see you next time.